1966 Best Picture winner, A Man for All Seasons, is my favorite movie. I would like to share some of the neat things I've noticed from repeated viewings. The film begins with sights of the king's gargoyles. They are threatening in appearance, yet dead and motionless stone. But as we journey to Thomas More's home down the River Thames, we see sights of peaceful nature, plants, birds, and ducks, alive and vibrant. At the film's end, we see nature again, with Thomas More at the scaffold, followed by the gargoyles and the tales of his persecutors' unhappy fates. The message is that evil and its servants are like those gargoyles, threatening but dead on the inside, while the saint of God is dynamic and truly alive. Who will wear this after me? Mm -hmm. Who's our next chancellor? You? Fisher? Suffolk? Fisher for me. The Fisher more refers to is John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester. Years before, in a letter, Thomas described him as, quote, distinguished for virtue as well as learning qualities in which he has no superior among living men. Unlike the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Warham, depicted in this scene, Fisher would go on to be executed by Henry for refusing to acknowledge the king's supremacy over the church. Today, St. John Fisher shares a Catholic feast day, June 22nd, with his friend, St. Thomas More. The Duke of Norfolk! Sic transit gloria mundi, reads the inscription above the door. Thus passes the glory of the world. The Latin the monks were chanting is from Psalm 51. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is before me always. Thomas More uttered this same psalm, kneeling in front of the block, shortly before his death. This is my daughter Margaret, sire. She's not yet had the honor to meet your grace. Why, Margaret, they told me you were a scholar. Answer, Margaret. Among women I pass for one, your grace. Antiquine modo latina loqueris and oxoniensi. Quem me docuit pater, domine? Bene. Optimum est. Grecamne linguam quoque te docuit. Grecamne docuit non pater meus, sed me patris amicus, Johannes Calatus Sancti Pauli Decanus. In literatus grecus tamen, nominus quam latinus, as magistri venuitur de Schipolis Tutitia. Margaret Moore Roper was a scholar indeed. At the age of 19, she was the first non-royal woman to publish a book she had translated into English. Let's see that scene again. Antiquine modo latina loqueris and oxoniensi. Quem me docuit pater, domine? Bene. Optimum est. Greg camne linguam quoque te docuit. Grecam me docuit non pater meus, sed me patris amicus, Johannes Calatus Sancti Pauli Decanus. In literatus grecus tamen, nominus quam latinus, as magistri venuitur de Schipolis Tutitia. Father John Collette, Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral in London, was Moore's confessor and close friend. We were first introduced to the king through an illusion in the waters, this is because his power relies upon glamour and perception. <laughs> when the king marries Anne Boleyn, we see the church in England share in the same illusion as the king, for they have blessed the royal marriage, and we see the gargoyles once again. When Thomas More is brought to the palace for questioning, we see this party-goer. Does he look familiar? Earlier in the film, he was lobbying Thomas for political favors. This world does not always punish vice or reward virtue. 
At Thomas More's trial, Richard Rich gives a false testimony which will condemn him. The judge asks, Sir Richard, do you wish to modify your testimony? No, my lord. Is there anything you wish to take away from it? No, my lord. Have you anything to add? No, my lord. Like St. Peter, he denies the Lord three times. St. Thomas More, in all seasons, pray for us.